The smoothbore musket was the standard weapon for both armies or both sides during this war, whether it was Patriot and Loyalist militia, Continental soldiers, British regular troops, or German Hessian troops. The basic use, style, and technique for fighting was exactly the same, whether you are holding a gun that was made in the United States, or in Germany, or in England, uh, or from France. Even before the French had officially allied with the United States, they were already smuggling thousands of weapons and supplies to the United States uh, to help us fight the British. So here in Valley Forge, uh, the early British guns that the Americans were using were slowly being replaced with these French model muskets. So. Viva la France. Unlike the militia soldiers or hunters that would use powder horns and pour and measure out the powder, everything would be preloaded in wrapped paper cartridges with the ammunition on the top and a fixed load of powder at the bottom. You would take, hold those cartridges in cartridge boxes like this, which would have various openings and holes that would secure each one. And then you would keep it wrapped up and covered in a nice, hopefully waterproof container like this cartridge box. You would reach in, take out one of those paper cartridges, and tear them open. You would then proceed to pour some of the black powder into this one pan. Close the pan so that the powder wouldn't fall out. Take the rest of the powder and the paper wadding and the rest of the ammunition, which not only include a ball, but often a couple bits of 22 caliber buckshot in an American combat load. Fill it into the, the muzzle of the gun. Making sure that it seats all the way down to the breech, you would take out the ramrod and ram it down. Return the rammer back to its position so that you don't lose or damage it. That's vital. And now the gun was ready to fire. To fire the gun, you pull the hammer back to full cock, level the gun, and when you pull the trigger, the flint that would be in place of the wood that we have here for safety would scrape against the steel plate, send sparks down into the powder that you had poured into the pan, setting it alight. Some of the flame from that, from that powder would go through a tiny touch hole in the breech of the gun and set off the main charge. That's one shot. You want to shoot it again, you have to start all over. Being able to do this routinely and quickly was one of the primary issues of training for the American and British and German armies. It takes discipline, it takes constant, constant drill to do this properly so that when you are in the chaos and noise of battle, you can still do this efficiently. There were rifles used on both sides, the American long rifle probably being the most famous, but most guns were smoothbore, so think of them as combat shotguns. Their accuracy beyond 50 yards was relatively limited, but they tended to use, as machine gunners in the Army would say today, accuracy by volume. You get enough people shooting quickly in the same general direction, somebody on the other side is going to get hit.